Welcome back to the debate, everyone. We're going to start with a film that could and should have got something in the silverware cabinet during the last award season, but for some mysterious reason didn't. Perhaps because Nomadland had hoovered up all the love for plain Americana. It's First Cow, directed by Kelly Reichardt. It's the getting started that's the puzzle. No way for a poor man to start. You have a cow. First cow in the territory. It's ain't a place for cows. No, it's no place for white men either. I sense opportunity here. Good Lord, give me another. I'll give you six ingots for that last one. I taste London in this game. Kelly Reichardt has given us a terrifically tough and sinewy tale of the American dream, shaped by the implacable market forces of capitalism and the surging tides of human nature. Reichardt takes us back to 1820s Oregon, where Cookie Figovitz, played by John Magaro, is a slippery adventurer who befriends an itinerant Chinese worker called King Lu, played by Orion Lee. They dream of getting rich as entrepreneurs, and they're not stupid or lazy, but of course any new business needs capital and how to get it. Why? With that certain special something that is the invisible foundation stone of all great fortunes, a crime. Lou points out that a cow has arrived in the territory, the first cow, and as such the object of exotic fascination. It belongs to the chief factor, an effete and absurd Englishman played by Toby Jones, and the pair hatch a bold plan to creep into this man's meadow in the dead of night, surreptitiously milk his cow and use the precious liquid to make oily cakes. These are the rich and delicious buttermilk scones that instantly become a hugely lucrative success at the local market, especially with the idiotic factor himself, who greedily gobbles them up. It is a tale of danger and hubris, but without hubris no great fortune can be made. I can imagine Thomas Hardy writing this, said in England. The ruling class from whose naivety the pair hope to scavenge their riches are arrogant and high-handed with both immigrant labour and the Native Americans. Like Lou and Figovitz, they are concerned with market forces. This is a tremendously engaging story which does something that very few movies do, mention money in such a way that we understand exactly what is at stake. The jeopardy is real and it's a question of financial survival. Reichardt tells this story with such humour and skill and the movie is shot with glorious simplicity. It's not quite right to call it Altman-esque, but I think Robert Altman would have loved it. Adam Raymeyer is an American indie filmmaker whose work I didn't know before watching this movie, Dinner in America. Here's his leading lady, played by Emily Skeggs, in her bedroom, rocking out. It's about an angry punk singer with a pyromania fetish and this lonely and nerdy young woman with ADHD who is his biggest fan. Kyle Gallner plays John Q. Public, real name Simon, the lead singer of a band called Psyops who performs anonymously in a balaclava. Off stage, he has this vocal fry badass voice like Ray Liotta in Goodfellas. Emily Skeggs is excellent as the quirky, dreamy Patty who takes indistinct Polaroids of herself masturbating to his music in her childhood bedroom and sends them to him anonymously. Fate brings them together and soon they are getting into criminal scrapes like Bonnie and Clyde. 20 years ago, Sam Mendes' American Beauty and Todd Solance's Happiness were at opposite ends of the spectrum of difficult, dysfunctional weirdness for this kind of material. Solance probably setting a gold standard for strangeness and discomfort. Raymeyer is, I think, at the sweeter American Beauty end of things. His film has its own very potent, truculent charm. Talking about this next film pains me quite a lot. It's Frankie, starring an actor I love, Isabelle Huppert, and from a director I love, Ira Sachs. Good morning. There's people in the hotel, you know. That's okay. I'm very photogenic. You're Francois Cromont's husband. I'm a big fan. Wow, you're a lucky man. I know I am. No, I'm sure I know it. Oh, yes, bien sûr. Paul, you're young, you're in good health. 
On est tout de même dans un des plus beaux endroits du monde, non? You know, in all my years in the film business, she's the only actress I've become really great friends with. Oh, I mean it. I wanted you to come here to meet my family. <laughs> she's in a hurry. So you know. Sachs usually creates such absorbing dramas, but this is a blank, uneasy, variably acted Euro-American pudding of a co-production shot in the Portuguese city of Sintra. It looks like one of those late Woody Allen movies in luxury tourist European vacation settings, but with zero possibility of any laughs or anything plausibly serious either. Isabelle Huppert plays Frankie, a famous TV star who pays for her entire extended family to come on holiday with her so she can supposedly tell them something important. Uper often merely sounds blank and haughty and detached. It looks as if she has never met any of these people before emerging from her trailer. The lines of dialogue fill the actors' mouths like wet cardboard and they stand around on the picturesque streets like tailor's dummies. We don't see any believable vulnerability or emotion and Uper is frankly on the verge of self-parody. Instead of this, go back and watch Ira Sachs' great earlier movies like Little Men with Greg Kinnear and Jennifer Ehle or Love is Strange with John Lithgow and Alfred Molina. So that's it. As always, I need you to evangelize with absolute passion for these vlogs. I need you to give them a like and a share on social media. And if you have not yet subscribed or not yet pressured your friends and family into subscribing, then I need you to take a long, hard look in the ethical conduct mirror. So please subscribe. You know it makes sense. Until next week.